In this lesson, we're going to take a look at limits involving infinity. So this will give us another aspect of limits besides what we've studied up to this point. We'll begin by taking a look at the concept of infinity in general and processes that are in some sense infinite. And then we'll look at limits involving infinity and how to um, use our standard limit notation with some slight modifications to talk about them. Let's begin by recalling how the concept of an infinite process works. We'll do this first by thinking about the infinity symbol. This looks like kind of like an eight symbol turned on its side. Here are a couple of things to keep in mind about this symbol. We'll be using it fairly frequently when talking about limits. First of all, it's not the name of a number. It's not a symbol like the four symbol or the 10 symbol or the one half symbol that names a particular number. It often appears in places where we normally put numerical expressions, but the infinity symbol does something a little bit different. We use it when we want to talk about a process that goes on without ever coming to an end. An example would be start starting from zero and counting up by one. You're never going to hit a last number. We will also sometimes put a negative sign in front of the infinity symbol. And this, as it often does, a negative sign often does, allows us to keep track of directions. Sometimes we have something that can go on forever in two different directions. And then we can talk about positive infinity and negative infinity to keep track of those directions. Now, when we're talking about functions, often the concept of infinity comes into play. One reason is just because the axes of our familiar rectangular coordinate plane extend forever in both directions. The real numbers that we keep track of using those axes go on forever in both the positive and negative directions. And so one thing we can ask about a function is what happens to it when its input or maybe its output keeps getting further and further and further away from zero in either direction. So increasing or decreasing without any boundary or end or termination or anything like that. Here's an example. Take the familiar x squared function. One thing we can ask is what happens to this if we let x get bigger and bigger and bigger? Let's say we're going in the positive direction. What's going to happen to the values of x squared? You can also think of this graphically. What happens if we're looking at the graph of y equals x squared if we start moving further and further and further to the right following the graph? Well, the value of x squared is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as well, also in the positive direction. Or in terms of the graph, we're going to see that as we move to the right, the graph is moving further and further and further up the coordinate plane. And this is the kind of thing we can talk about quite effectively and efficiently using limit notation and incorporating that infinity symbol into it. Let's take a look. This will turn our attention to notation for limits involving infinity. So one thing we just looked at in our little example involving x squared is what happens when x moves further and further away from zero in either the positive or the negative direction. In our example, we use the positive direction, but we could use the negative direction as well. Here's how we'll talk about this using limit symbols. We'll write stuff like this. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. That's how we read that. That describes what happens when we let x get bigger and bigger in the positive direction. Right? This symbol here then communicates something about the what happens to the values of f of x when we do that to x. If we want to see what happens as x gets further and further from zero in the negative direction, we'll say, we'll write what you see here. And we read that as the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. And so this allows us to talk about what a function does when x gets further and further from zero in the negative direction, moving to the left in the graph or however you want to put that. So there's some new adaptions of our limit notation to this new situation involving going off to infinity. We can also have situations, and we'll look at some later, 
in which the values of a function get bigger and bigger as the inputs do something, approach a certain number, for example. So in this case, what we'll do is say that the limit itself is, and this is a little bit of a, a distortion, but it does the job, equal to infinity. So we'll write stuff like this. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals infinity. Again, the infinity symbol does not name a number here. Um, what this means is that as x gets closer and closer to a, the value of the function f of x gets bigger and bigger, increases without ever stopping. We can also write something like this here, the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals negative infinity. And that means that as x gets closer and closer to a, the values of the function decrease without stopping. In other words, they get further and further away from zero in the negative direction. So let's summarize all of this so far by looking at various limits involving infinity applied to the x squared function. We already looked at this a little bit. Now we'll look at it a little more closely. We can describe the behavior we observed earlier using our limit notation. One thing we can ask is what happens to x squared as x approaches infinity? Or in other words, what is the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared? Well, that's going to be infinite because as x gets bigger and bigger, x squared gets bigger and bigger as well. We can ask the same thing as x approaches negative infinity, and this will also be equal to infinity because as x gets further and further and further off in the negative direction, we still see x squared getting bigger and bigger in the positive direction. Think about the graph of y equals x squared. As we move to the left or to the right, the graph is moving further and further up in the coordinate plane. And that's an example of dealing with a polynomial function. In general, when you're dealing with polynomial functions, you don't get especially interesting results when looking at limits involving infinity. The limit of one of these things as x approaches either positive or negative infinity tends not to be very interesting. The function will approach either infinity or negative infinity. The details, as you might remember maybe from a pre-calculus course, depend on the degree and the leading coefficient of the polynomial. So this um, is what's sometimes summarized using the phrase the end behavior of the polynomial. The more interesting cases though, are when we move away from polynomials and look at other types of functions. And in our next lesson, we will take a look at how we can use limits involving infinity to study the asymptotes of functions that have some kind of asymptote.